Hello, my name is Will and this is a serotonin session. Today, I'm going to be having a conversation with my dad, aka John Brockerbank. He is a retired police officer who very recently has gone through a very significant lifestyle change in terms of his physical appearance, to say the least. Thank you. So thank you so much for actually joining me for this. I'm, I'm really excited to have a chat about it. Yeah. So to start with, what I'd just like to find a little bit about is just your background. So your upbringing and, you know, I know for a fact that you were an active individual, but if you could just go into that a little bit more. That'd yeah, be amazing. absolutely. I, I was brought up in a village, so we were permanently out, permanently doing things, permanently playing football, permanently, permanently playing sport. Mm. Um, I started at school playing rugby um, and other sports as well, but mainly rugby. And I used to cycle everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And I used to cycle from my village, seven miles to rugby training, three times a week, and then on weekends. Mm. So literally I was as fit as you could possibly be. Um, always outside, like I say, um, quite Cause, physical. Because you worked on farms I worked as well. on farm, throwing hay bales around, straw bales around. Yeah. You know, great times. Really, really good fun with yeah. all my mates. But yeah, the sport took off very early on. Yeah, and I think I've definitely inherited that. Someone who, who really enjoys my sport as well. No. I and um, I, th I think <laughs> <laughs> I think I definitely did. I yeah, you got it. I think we did. Yeah, I, I got with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously, you know, you, you kept that up and you played rugby. Into, I don't know how old you were until you, when did you start uh, playing? Yeah, I played right the way through my teenage years, in my 20s. And then when I, I came and joined the police in the South, I carried on playing for a little while, uh, but kept picking up injuries and various other things. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I played to a reasonable standard mm. back in the North um, and back down here in, in Suffolk as well. Um, but to be fair, it, the, the job just got in the way. So yeah, yeah, well, that was actually a, a poetic segue uh, oh, because okay. what I wanted to actually yeah. find out a little bit is obviously you at one stage brought yourself down from from the north, um, yeah. further south, and that was influenced by by being in the police essentially. Yeah, I mean, I, there was a couple of things. One, I was fed up doing what I was doing, and it wasn't working. I wanted something physical. I wanted something outdoor, mm. um, and I played rugby with some police officers that were up in Cumbria and everybody seemed to be talking about it, seemed to be enjoying it. I thought, right, we'll give this a crack. Work was literally was on a tender, you know, t in a tender position in the north. I worked as an engineer mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I could have been out of work at any time. So I said, right, let's give it a go. Um, met your mum uh, yeah. and moved south, but not not into Norfolk, but in, moved into Suffolk. And that's mm -hmm. pretty much the start of it, really. Yeah. Great, great. You know, and, good choice. And when you were in the police in the early stages, would you say that that was a relatively physical job? Did you keep yourself pretty physically active? I, I'm smiling, he says, yes, <laughs> I did. I was very active. Uh, and it was a very physical job because back then, um, you know, you were fighting every Friday and Saturday night or you were wrestling with people every Friday and Saturday night. So I maintained my sort of physical presence. Mm. In fact, I, I probably built up on the physical presence so you looked a bit more sort of... Yeah, uh, but the, way back, way back then, you didn't have things like bulletproof vests or soundproof yeah. vests or or any of this stuff that now makes you look really bulky. Yeah, I just was big. Yeah, I, I, you know, I <laughs> the, the, I the, the size is what and, sort of did the job. Let me let me tell you that came in handy on more. <laughs> yeah, well, I can imagine. Oh, it did. Yeah, I yeah. think. Uh, yeah. uh, well, I think again, it's just being able to. You show that in reality you are going to be able to to hold yourself, and as you say, yeah. in in comparison to maybe what is in place now, you know, at points you would have probably been by yourself, and you really did have to hold your own. So the I, physical health side of things was probably very key. At that it point. was, and and obviously I was six foot three. Uh, I was at the time I think I was about fifteen stone, maybe sixteen stone. Yeah. Uh, once described as a job uh, by a judge as ideal man for the job. Oh, uh, <laughs> because of the sort of nature of what we were getting involved in yeah. you know, fights and every, all that sort of thing it just yeah. fit, it worked and in your case essentially you you were someone who basically worked from the bottom up you were someone who yeah. came in at you know the the lowest level in, in police in, in one sense and it sounded like you absolutely loved it. I think you, as you say, you were very suited to the job, but yeah. you are someone who, well, coming, I can say this because I'm your son and I've seen it happen, but you're someone who has worked very, very hard over the years to probably make up for what was lacking a little bit academically yeah. when you were younger. Yeah. But through that, what ended up happening was that you started to actually see a rise in your position and your role within the police. And yeah. would you say that, 
you know, how how did your habits of, you know, living a healthy lifestyle maybe get influenced by um, your changing role within yeah, the police? Yeah, I, I, if you start at the very beginning, and I'm not going to go through the list, yeah, but, of course. you know, I started as a, as a, a, as a constable and and I was a cycle beat officer, so I rode a bike around, which just fits me Yeah, perfectly. yeah, for sure. Uh, but I very quickly moved into the CID world and, um, and got promoted to one of the lower ranks fairly quickly, to be fair. But I did a lot of work on drug squads and various other bits like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I got moved to Ipswich, which was a, a bit of a travel, and I just really kicked in, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and very early on, I was um, started to go up a couple of ranks. I got onto the murder teams, or the, uh, what they call the major investigation teams. Yeah. Um, and I would say it's at that, you know, round about that point, maybe even a bit earlier, if I was honest, when I was on mm-hmm. proactive teams, you, your hours of work were so long and so drawn out. You ate badly I've Mm. got I've got to admit sometimes the stress got to you particularly as the rank got higher the responsibility became um, greater Mm. and when you when you say about um, sort of unhealthy eating what was that so was it that you were coming home and it was just that it was whatever was there you'd eat or was it well I'd have to say healthy eating and drinking Uh, the culture back then of Drinking beer, alcohol, mm. which I wasn't unfamiliar with, is a <laughs> simple truth. It well, made, coming, coming from the rugby background, it, I think, uh, I think and, it was destined. From the north, yeah, yeah I was destined yeah. to do it. Um, but, you know, you'd finish work at, say, midnight and you'd have a kebab or you'd have fish and chips or, yeah. you you know, you'd be working until three in the morning and you'd be eating at strange times. And it just, you know, I just loaded it up. Mm. And I used... The drink, if I'm honest, uh, particularly when I got on the murder teams and some of the things you saw weren't, weren't particularly weren't particularly pleasant. But mm. in fairness, I probably would have been from when I was in CID normally. Yeah. Um, alcohol became a bit of a sort of crutch in some cases. Yeah. Not not proud of it, but that's what yeah. happened. Mm. You combine alcohol as soon as you have a few beers, you get but the bunches. You get the f- yeah. You get the bunches yeah, and away sure. you go. And so I did start seeing, and certainly the further up the rank I got, the less time I had. So I didn't train at yeah, the exercise. Yeah, that's my next question. Um, and yeah, I got myself in a bit of a bad place. So it, so it meant really that you were going day to day. There wasn't much exercise going on. Yeah. You, the the, the, the well, eating apart from, hand, apart from apart from the <laughs> apart from yeah one particular movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, as you say, that the exercise was maybe going a bit of a stray. And then when it came to eating, it wasn't really about being. It wasn't conscious eating. It wasn't yeah. you thinking about what I'm putting in. It's just. Basically, you were fueling yourself. Absolutely, and, and you, everybody, anybody who knows me knows I eat, I used to eat quickly, mm-hmm. completely mindlessly. Mm-hmm. I also used to smoke, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, I smoked, well, could have been anything up to 30, 40 francs a day. I remember going in, I had a little period as a sergeant in custody at Ipswich, um, and I just found it quite stressful, that, that type of work. Mm. you light up a fag I'd light it up in one area I'd then light another one up in another area mm. first thing I did when I got up in the morning was have a fag mm. um, yeah I start. Yeah. I would say that, that's about the time it started to it seemed it. like it was all a bit of a mixing pot there so it's just so many factors that, absolutely um, and so what would you say then sort of when, in that window of time when did you start to really notice that maybe the weight gain so oh, I would say early on you could mask it a bit. You you sort of... People didn't know how much I was eating and probably didn't know how much I was drinking, I mm. was honest. And then, of course, you start to get a pot belly. Yeah. Um, you become a bit slower. I remember I was doing, still doing sport, you know, some sport. Yeah. Um, fitness and all of that stuff. Well, the biking's been pretty consistent, consistent for you right, the, the whole way through. through. I, to be fair, I just made excuses for it. Um, yeah. But I would say, yeah, I don't know, I was in my late 30s, you know, Late, late thirties, early forties, and it really did come on then. Yeah. Um, what was your, what was your top weight? Where oh, Jesus, I, I, when I couldn't think of it, I remember I, from about twenty fifteen, I started to record in a spreadsheet. Yeah. Me weight, and I stopped because it got scary. Yeah. Uh, One hundred and twenty seven kilos, which would have been not shy of twenty odd stone. Uh, uh, well, probably a bit more than that, and I, I yeah. certainly was over twenty stone for a while. Yeah. A goodly while, um, and I. I've probably been higher if I was honest. But it, it's it's so surreal from from my perspective anyway because obviously I've seen I've seen photos of you when you were younger and yeah. I look at you now and obviously I knew you predominantly at that weight and it's very surreal to think actually uh, that that's that's where you were at. Yeah. But I think as you started to sort of allude to with actually starting to record your your weight back in 2015, although although it stopped, 
I think you maybe had, or at least were starting to develop some form of awareness of, I of the thing. But I, and, I was conscious. And, and what um, sort of started to happen in your case is that your weight actually started to fluctuate when you started to maybe be a little bit more aware of what was going on. But yeah, why I, was it fluctuating? Why I, could, you find I, I would rhythm? say that I was toward the end when I was... Uh, within three years of retirement, and I retired in 2016, within three years of retirement, I was really sky high. It, it, it just was all over the place. And my weight was really high. I was, you know, coming to terms with I'm getting close to retirement and the stresses of the work and, you know, a bit of personalities and, you know, lots of things, lots of, a bit of history, you know. You were, I was making it difficult for you guys. Some days I was working three days on the shop. Mm. So I would say my fluctuation was I always knew I was never meant to be that big. So I, it, you'd have a battle in your mind as to, I, can, I shouldn't be this big, this is wrong. I can't, you can't do this. Yeah. And then I'd have a little spurt, as you do. Yeah. <laughs> Did a bit of training, all that sort of thing. Drop a few kilos. Everything's unky dory Go out, ooh, on your marks, get set, get to summer, on the beer again. Boof, yeah. All for, all for it, what was it? Was it? No, it was normally around January, wasn't it? That you, I, I think started, it was. Yeah. It was dry, dry January. Dry January. And remember. then, but you would be great. So you would have, yeah. you know, three months, and uh, yeah. I think the influence of that impacted what you were eating. Yeah. And then I don't think you were maybe necessarily as consciously thinking, okay, these are the calories and this, that, and the other. But I think yeah. you were at that point. I going, was kind of conscious of weight. Yeah. And I was conscious of appearance, if I'm honest. Yeah. You looked at yourself, you know, and we've just done a bit of view to that today where you look back on some pictures. It's so and surreal. Some videos and so been, surreal. Oh, God, what's happened to me? Yeah. And that was, it's that. It, you know, you, you just think, God, do I look like that? Mm. And I don't, I, it's nobody else's fault. I can't blame anybody. Yeah. That, that's down to me. Yeah. That's down to me being too close to the biscuit barrel. Uh, you know, yeah. as simple as that. And I... What I suppose what I'm trying to say is, like anybody out there, there are a number of factors that led to me to live that unhealthy lifestyle. But yeah. if you said to me, was that the real you, the natural you, the answer is no. Yeah, and I think, and it's very surreal again from coming from a son's perspective, yeah. I knew you at that heavier weight. Yeah. So what this sort of recent window has been, has been, and you know, we talk about it all the time, yeah. is that it's actually very surreal for me because it's... This is obviously what you talk about in that this is where you oh, feel you yeah. that's where you were, this is where you feel like you should be sat. But yet, you know, those those barriers were in play. I, I mean there'll be people who watch this mm. who will say, Well, I remember him like that. Yeah. So what 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 happened to this other fit you know, what happened to this bit that you yeah. like you know, you come back in? And I've recently just been up home, you know, in the north, uh, and some people have seen this and, and it's all lovely. Yeah, it's nice to get the comments. Uh, that people, oh, crikey, yeah, you've lost a lot of weight, all that. I, I like that. Yeah. What, the only thing that does to me is think, my God, what... What was I? What, yeah. that, that's it. And you just think, oh, hell, yeah. you know, come on, I'm not going to let that happen again. Yeah. Well, But that, as we're going to go on to, there was mm. lots that got in the way of that. Yeah. Well, I think um, I think what would be actually great now is to maybe do a little bit of reflection on, on this most recent window yeah. of time and think yeah. about, well... You know, we, we had that window of time where we were fluctuating. You were definitely aware of it, but you yeah. weren't necessarily able to sustain it for a long period of time. No. So what has been different about this, this time, most recent time? I think the involvement of you guys, mm -hmm. uh, you and Laura, in terms of... Laura got me a book at Christmas by a guy called Charles Duig, mm -hmm. and it's called Habit. Mm -hmm. And I read it, and... It talks about how you form habits and then in theory it gives you some sort of mechanisms as to how you deal with them. Mm. And I also uh, I went to the doctors. Uh, I had high cholesterol. My blood pressure was all over the place. They were telling me to lose weight. Mm. I've dislocated both of my knees and I was putting weight on there. And, do you know, I just started to think, come on, I've been retired three years. I've biked. Yeah, in the meantime, I biked around Britain a couple of times. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Biked around Ireland, and then drop a few kilos, and then come back, and away and then you go fall again. Back yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. And even if I was honest, even when I rode around those places, I did that um, unhealthily. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I drank, think. I, well, let's, if we think the, back to just the, even us two being in Brighton, I correct. think we. Uh, I think we had a fair few. We had a few. Possibly. And uh, anybody who entitles their blog "Bikes, Beer, and Cosmic Consequences, Consequences" has got a problem. <laughs> and so. You know, it it was a quote that I read, and I've got it here because I, 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 to be honest with you, it's not one of them that you commit to memory. But yeah, Dewey did this thing called the uh, the habit loop. 
But I read something that said some cancers are closely linked to lifestyle factors such as obesity. Mm. And I remember reading it, and that was in about November. And I can tell you uh, exactly, I weighed 127 kilos. Wow. Having started to ride a bike at 115 kilos. Mm. And, you know, I'm proud to say now, yeah, it's good. Every bag I had on my bike when I rode around Britain in 2016, mm. the total amount of those panniers and tent and various other bits and pieces was 25 kilos. Well, I'd lost more than that. And so that's, I had I lost... I mean, if, any, if anyone's picked up a 25 kilo weight, like yeah. that, it, you know, that I is substantial. That I was pushing that around the Lake District, well, Wales and all well, that. Well, if you think about it as well, you know, because if you your combined weight with those bags, that your the spokes on on your bike oh, were literally them. popping. Yeah, yeah, I popped them in Ireland. I was I, I brought I think fifteen spokes. Yeah, I, fifteen I made, spokes. Yeah, I made excuses for it though. Yeah, I, I'd be sitting there saying, oh, you know, it's weakness, or I'm putting so much power through it. It's crap. It's yeah. too heavy. And yeah. that, that's the simple truth. And you know what you said? What was it? That phrase there, and the thought that I was doing myself damage mm. and perhaps not get to see you guys or your mom and, mm-hmm. and then maybe even grandkids and kids you think come on yeah. wake up but it's easier said than done oh, 100%. and you have to face and one of the things I would say I've had to do is first what it is that makes or made me do what I did mm. um, and there are a whole number of factors mm. stress work but you can't blame just that well, habit was a biggie yeah. you know my habits had got such that I could you know, even now, you know me, I can still drink, but, yeah. but I've changed the way I look at that. Yeah, and I, th- I think that actually this would be a, a really good point to actually maybe start diving into a little bit, you know, what strategies you've used, because you obviously you focus in that you, you had this this definitive point where, you know, you, you saw the quote, you saw your weight, and ultimately you were, you were and you read the book, sorry, yeah. and you ultimately decided, right, here is, here is the time, I've now got to make these changes happen. Yeah. So what did you do? You know, what habits, what routines did you right. form to, to make that happen? Right, this book uh, asks, you a number of, uh, asks you a number of questions and it, it, and it asks you around, you have to be really honest with yourself. Yeah. And my cravings were for fe- food, beer and people. Yeah. I, I liked company, I liked, you know, that sort of thing. And it, it asks you to look at the cues and I can remember things like five o'clock at night was beer o'clock. Yeah. And... You know, if I walked into Tesco's or Sainsbury's, I'd have to have six packets of cheese and onion crisps. Yeah, you were talking. Uh, you were telling me about this. Yeah, so what yeah, was, what yeah, was no, the case I, with the? No, no, no idea. Uh, uh, I like own brand supermarket cheese and onion crisps, and I'd eat six packs in one sitting, and then go back and get some more. I used to think of a snack. I used to go into a fantastic coffee shop where we where we live, uh, and I'd have a sausage roll and a piece of fridge cake, and just think, oh, that's all right, it's a snack. Yeah, and I, I very because of the book, it made me look at well. Hold on, now examine what it is you're putting in, and it became obvious that I needed information. I needed data. Yeah, I'd seen you with a Fitbit, so yeah. I got a Fitbit. Mm. Uh, but the most important thing, the biggest factor that's changed the way I now see things is I record everything, everything I eat, and eat. I still can't get out of the habit of doing it. I'm doing it now, and we're in yeah. what, what are we now September. Yeah, I've been doing it now. Uh, nearly nine months. For nine months, yeah. And I'll continue doing it because I record everything, even down to the bit of oil I mm. put in the bottom of the pan to fry it. Yeah. I record that on Fitbit. So, and my, what I then did, and trust me, you know, it was a struggle. I took, you know, cycling properly again. Yeah. And doing big, big mileages. Big, yeah. When I was a young man, I used to do 40 mile races. Keswick to Barrow, I did three or four times. I've done... Mm. Um, the Snowden Seven several times, and I all oh, when I was lighter and younger, and, I, and my I think my physicality was that's what I'm I'm good at. Mm. So I then decided that once I understood what I was putting in my body, and it shocked me. I won't mm. lie, it shocked me. I never knew I was throwing so much in. Yeah, you know, particularly on drink nights mm. that I call them now, but then drink but nights with, were with pint, you know. 10, 12 plus Easily. beers. You know me, I could. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I've, you know, the, the people are going to watch this who will remember me drinking more than Just that. Ridic- yeah, ridic- yeah. And you then throw in the food. Shit, and I, you, I, you're I wasn't going to, ah, you were never going to, I was never going to burn it off. Yeah. So what I did, I said, right, I'm going to record everything so I've got that information, that data yeah. was there for me. And what I then said is, right, I now must burn, record it my heart rate, I must burn more calories than... I put in that that right there controlled is, my input. Yeah, but also got me fit. 
Yeah. Um, and now I, that is a habit. So there are silly things I have to do. I have to get up in the morning and sit in <laughs> virtually in the same place and have my porridge for my breakfast. Mm-hmm. I chew my food. You yeah. just sat with me and we've just well, had dinner. Well, we just had this conversation, didn't we, that previously it would literally be that you would, you know, we'd sit down for the meal and often because we put food on our own plate, you'd have all the plates actually on the table. When you were eating, it was literally that before you'd yeah. finished chewing like one set of your food, yeah. it was on to the next one. And then because the food was in front of you, yeah. you'd have the extra one. And, and I think maybe at that time, because... It, Ultimately, I, I was doing something very similar in a way, yeah. and it took it. And you probably maybe saw when I made my transition to, to think yeah. about that a bit more. But I think all of us, you know, somewhat enabled each other to to do that. But obviously, on in the, case, in the case of age, it's probably a little bit different for me to do that than for for, for yourself to well, do mine that. Was, mine was excessive. You know, uh, it seems strange talking to you about it because you said me do it. But. Yeah. Uh, a lasagna tray about year big mm. um, you know my, maybe you guys would have a quarter of it or something like that and I could sit and eat just a lot because I, I just never got the feeling Yeah. and part of that was because I ate it too quickly and I, I just never got the feeling Yeah. Uh, the other part was comfort I did it for a variety of reasons and I just kept eating yeah. and you know but like I say it's not just that you, you then tag on that your beer mm-hmm. not moving enough not exercising all the things that I naturally felt better when I did them. Yeah. I just want to do it. And I think that's also another part of it as well, isn't it? That ultimately, yes, you had a significant physical change and your physical health is better. Yeah. But ultimately, you are now in a mind space yeah. where you can Thanks see you. that actually having, you know, you do the workout. You, and again, it can be completely different because you go, you, you do some runs, you do some yeah. biking. You've done, when, when Laura was yeah. here for, for the lockdown, you were doing the, you know, some hit Circuit. sessions and yeah. circuits and stuff. So it's not necessarily about always doing the same thing. But I think internally you were like, right, whatever it is, I've got to do something today. It needs to burn a certain amount of calories. Correct. And then you built that relationship of understanding that ultimately you need to be putting in either the same or less amount of calories right. in terms of what you're burning off. And in your case, you were tracking that so well. Yeah. And, you know, what? How, do you know how much you weigh now? Uh, yeah, I weigh, uh, for the first time ever, I'm under 15 stone. I'm about 14, 10. Um, which is and just a lot. 94 kilos, which, gee, it's you just know. It's mind-blowing, really. For me, yeah. But, you know, it's fair to say that when... I was doing all the exercise, all that. You have got to remember it. I'm 55 years old. It's different. My yeah. knees are sore and, and I, I literally was gulping tablets. But also I found it hard to start running again. Mm. The only advice I'd give around that is I just kept going. I bought some new trainers, gave myself as much panning as I can. Low and slow. Because you don't need to be burning a bloody, you know. And so yeah. I started a lot of walking. And your mum's now started walking yeah. as well. So you start doing a lot of walking. I then did run walks. Uh, I always cycled, so that's fine. Mm. But if you, I did, I'd cycle, as you know, for sometimes Just for days, t- days, yeah, days on time. Days. And then during lockdown, obviously, I did the Lands End to John O'Groats on a bloody turbo in the band. Don't ever let me do that, that again. I mean, ever. <laughs> I don't know how, how you, you got through that. Me how doing you, that. I how you got through it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but hey, well, hey, it's one of those. It was for it was for a great cause as well. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But it, yeah. but it worked, and it, yeah. It, it, so. All I would say is that it's very difficult as a, an older person. To you feel can, like you, you can I gen- watch, I watch you, you trade. Do you know what? That has just triggered a memory in me. that I remember oh. us being sat um, at the beer house one time and we were talking about habits. Yeah. And I think you were saying that, you know, at that time, this is when you were, were still quite big. You were yeah. like, you know, I, ca- I really struggle. I, ca- I can't do what I did when yeah. I was younger. And I think oh, internally I at that point, you were thinking there is no way back for me, I'd give and up. yeah, and I'd now and, and now look at it. It's yeah. it's just it's strange though what the trigger what that trigger looks like is the fact that you know you everybody should say oh yeah you must want to do it for your family and all that yeah yeah you could, well it can't but just it's, be that it's a yeah. bit of a bigger thing than that you've got to address what it is that makes you you know makes you the way you are and, and somehow I've managed to do a bit of that you mm-hmm. know there's still always going to be times when you know things are difficult or you're anxious about something and I'm currently mm-hmm. doing some work you know now that it's challenging it is challenging but it, all I would say is I just now feel I feel a million dollars yeah of course it's nice that people say you know you've lost a, the average comment has been are you will 
You know, <laughs> so they, number one, they don't they don't think, oh bloody hell, he's lost a he's, bit of weight. He's he's just, two, are you ill? I'm actually not oh, even you got, not single. Do you know, I bet that's not even that's not even surprising to hear that. Well, no, because you, you were like that for so long. You sit you sit there and you you know it was only very recent I was up with friends and the, you know, they sort of quacky yeah. Just, you know, Who you are you? A damn good dinner. What's the matter with you, man? <laughs> uh, but it, oh, I, I, I don't look back. But what I would say is, it hasn't been the easiest thing to do. No. But it, 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 if if you are naturally nothing good is fit, I think it is. It's so necessary. And mm. it, you know, if anybody wanted to come, I would show them. I, I can tell you, I can tell you everything I've eaten for the last couple how of many days. months. Yeah. And I can tell you how many steps I've taken. I can tell you how many runs yeah. I've done. And you know, I'm on Strava and various yeah. bits and pieces. And, and I think what will be, I think obviously in your case, you've had to make such a significant lifestyle change that yeah. I definitely see why you still have the connection to the calorie counting and being very, very methodical. I'm too scared to stop it. Yeah. And I think hopefully, you know, over time, now that you've developed this new habit, and we talk about this all the time, that you've got the habit, you've got the routines yeah. in place is that you will then be able to hit a point where it's, okay, well, now let's see if I can do this without, you know, the carry. And it'll be very interesting to see if you can make that transition. Yeah, well, what it, what it did, I set myself a lot of objectives. And, you know, one of the things I had, I had visceral fat, which is that fat that goes around your organs. It's not good for you. Mm. And my visceral fat levels, when I started this, and, I, and I'm quite ashamed to say, were in the dangerous level. Mm. And so I set myself the first advantage is, right, I've got to get them down to normal level and I've got to do that by June of this year. And, I, and I've managed to do that. I uh, got my body mass index was 30 odd, mm. which as we know, it should be about 24. Well, I'm, I'm under that now. And it, they're just little markers. Mm. It, you don't underestimate, or I didn't underestimate, or I probably did actually. I probably underestimated how hard it was to, to meet them, yeah, um, and I did some extreme stuff which burnt a lot of so, calories. But yeah. the, you know, the sort of things you've got to ask yourself, I think, is you've got to have a reward somewhere. Yeah. And now I see rewards in a different way. So my, I now don't drink in a week, uh, or I, I don't eat unhealthy food. So me and you and our famous sausage rolls. Let's talk <sighs> sausage rolls. Sausage rolls. I, mean, they, I have you know, thought I've actually become a sausage roll at certain yeah, points. Yeah, we, yeah. You used to make... I lived on them. Well, we used to make the... It was the, the homemade sausage rolls with the little marmite yeah. edge to them. If you've never done it, you need to try recipe, it. It's absolutely recipe amazing. online. Jump recipe, online. yeah. Online. Rest, we're going we're gonna to put that up. But <laughs> these things were... You just basically... You couldn't stop eating them. Like yeah. you would... Without even because as well because they were homemade, you didn't yeah. even really consider the calories, and, and you would never have known anyway. But we were literally maybe having like five, yeah. six, just smashing. But them I back, don't but... want to stop doing that, and no. I don't want to stop having a bit of chocolate cake. I don't yeah. want to stop having it. You know, it's and finding the balance. Actually, what you, yeah, but what I needed, I can't say that everybody who listening to this is going to have the same mentality as me. But I just it just shocked me by recording exactly what the calories were. I thought. Bloody hell, you know, I remember going out the fridge and I used to like, cut a bit of ch- cheddar cheese, yeah. put it on a cracker and I did it once. I thought, well, I'll just have what I would normally have. And I would have had four of those with cheddar yeah. cheese on. That one piece of cheese was more than my entire breakfast mm. now and probably more than my entire dinner. Mm. And I just wasn't, I just didn't know. No. And I think the education around what things cost calorifically mm. Massive. Well, this is actually a beautiful poetic segue to, to sort of close out um, it's a this, this segue. Oh, it's a segue. So it's just you, you've led me in to be oh. able to say, okay, well, maybe this is the direction that we could have some like questioning that. going now. So that's like that. so beautiful poetic segue. Right, okay. Is that basically to sort of finish off, is there what would you say are the key bits of advice Ooh, right. from what you have experienced? And again, everyone is different. So it's not to say that. What has worked for you is going to work for someone else. But based off your own experiences, yeah. what would you say are the key things that have helped you get to where you're at now? Number one, understand why you are where you are. Mm. Um, and if there is something, an issue that is troubling you, deal with it. Yeah. Uh, in some way, not necessarily kick it out or get rid of it or do anything like that, but deal with it. Face it. Uh and that might be, you know, work related, might be stress related, might be relationship related, any of those sort of things, but understand it, recognise it and deal with it. Mm. Number two, count the calories. Just mm. see if your body is fat and you say that's because my metabolism's slow, which is what I used all the time, um, that's not being right. Yeah. So what I did, just try it. It's a pain 
but mm. try it for a couple of weeks and just record exactly everything. And I mean every sweet, yeah. every time you go into the cupboard and just nick two of them out of there and woof them. Mm. And I was, you know... Mum caught, mum caught you a couple of times. Oh, you'd, hear, you'd, 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 hear, you'd hear the, you'd hear the, uh, oh, the doors going like, oh, I've got you, I've got you, I've got you. She used to put, you know, you finish the dinner, you lot would all have your dinner out of it, a cottage pie or something, yeah. and you lot would all be sitting in the living room, and I'd go in there, and I wouldn't just have a teaspoon. You'd just be stuff. giving it large. I'd be giving it large till yeah. somebody caught me. Yeah. And so that that's one thing, record yeah. what you're doing and have a look. My mind works on information on data. I would say having some device that tells you what your heart rate is and are you exercising enough. Mm -hmm. I knew I could exercise enough, but start slowly, build up, and but more importantly, understand why you're doing it. So mm -hmm. I, my final tip, main one, I move more, I exercise more than I put in. Yeah, That's that, it. that is end of that is it. That and is exactly it. That is easier for some, not for you. You're fit as a bloody fiddle. Mm. Easier for some than others. But by exercising, I mean walk. Yeah. Do press Does, Yeah, it doesn't, do it doesn't have to be getting in the gym. Get an electric so many bike, things you can not do. a normal bike. Get an electric bike so you're pedaling more. Because at the moment, if you're not pedaling at all, then it's... You're, not, you're not burning anything. Mm. Um, there's doors with me, man. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that. That was... Well, so and obviously it's very weird because you know I've seen this, but it's always great to have you know a full blown conversation. Yeah. And again, hopefully for some of you out there, you've you've been able to take maybe a few messages from this. And if not, maybe you've just enjoyed our conversation. If you enjoy this video, please do make sure that you you give it a like and subscribe to the Serotonin channel. Follow all of our social media platforms. We've got again so much amazing content to come out. So again, thank you so much, Dad. You're welcome. You're welcome. And um, until the next time. <laughs>